Hello students, my name is Ishan Akbar and in today's video we are going to discuss the geometric design of isolated foundations. Uh, first of all, uh, we have to know about the isolated foundation. Isolated foundation means that we have one column, let us suppose this is C1 and we have other column that is C2. Third column is known as C3 and if we support these columns and the structure has these columns with different supports or separate support or isolated support for each column, then these columns are known as isolated foundations or isolated footings. For if a single column has a single separate footing, then that footing is known as isolated foundation or isolated footing. So we have to determine the geometry, geometrical parameters mean we have to determine the breadth and length of the footing or foundation for single column for given loads. For this we have uh, some uh, little or simple introduction for foundations df is less than three to four times b then the foundations are known as shallow foundations. They know uh, they need minimum cost of material and construction so shallow foundations are preferred with respect to cost of materials and construction because they are economical in this way easy in construction because labor uh, we don't need skilled labor for the construction of shallow foundations on the other hand they are they have a disadvantage of shallow foundations due to if the bearing capacity of the soil is very low or lesser bearing capacity soil then the settlement will be huge so we will not be able to con control our uh, rectify the uh, larger settlements below the foundations. So there are uh, different types of uh, shallow foundations. First one is isolated which we are going to discuss here in this video. Next one is combined. We will discuss this combined footings in next video and strap foundations and last one is the mat or rough foundations. So as much as we are concerned with the isolated foundations, they are designed typically for the given loads. So simply we have to know the all types of or all loads acting on the foundation due to column. We consider that the column itself is a weightless material. So there is no weight of the column uh, which is uh, for which the foundation is to be constructed. So simply we prefer isolated footings if the distance between two adjacent footings is more are equal to 30 centimeters I mean you can see in this figure if the distance between adjacent foundations is more than this distance is more than 30 centimeter then we adopt shallow foundations otherwise if this distance is less than 30 centimeter then we are going to adopt raft or mat foundation for all these columns there will be single foundation for all these columns whose distances are less than 30 centimeter so it means if distance between each column is greater than 30 centimeter, then we can adopt shallow foundation. And if the distance between these foundations is less than 30 centimeter, then we can go with the raft foundation. Sorry, here this is not shallow. This is simply spread. Spread or isolated. Isolated means every single column has different or separate foundation for itself. So for design procedure, it is very simple procedure. We, you, you need not to worry about the design procedures. Uh, for this calculation of uh, geometry of the uh, shallow foundation or isolated shallow foundation, here in this case, we will consider a square foundation as an example. <coughs> Sorry. So first of all, as a first step, you will calculate the net allowable bearing capacity of the soil as by using the Tarzaghi equation or by using general bearing capacity equation, you mostly get QU or QU gross. This is determined by Tarzaghi equation or uh, in this case, you will know it by field tests. From this QU gross, you have to de determine the ultimate net bearing capacity. From ultimate gross bearing capacity or ultimate bearing capacity, you will have to get the net bearing capacity or net ultimate bearing capacity. How will you get this? You will deduct the pressure of concrete and pressure of soil. Mean, say, uh, at this point, the bearing capacity of the soil is QU gross. 
so we can say see that here there is a pressure of foundation over this soil that is count in the counter direction to the bearing capacity of soil and we can see that this will be soil fill over the concrete foundation and it will also act in opposite direction here this QUG is in upward direction and these two pressures are in up downward direction so they are just cancelling the effect of QUG so we can say that net ultimate mean net resistance or net ability of the soil to bear the load is after deducting this concrete reaction or concrete loads and these soil loads from the soil total bearing capacity. So net bearing capacity is equal to ultimate or total bearing capacity minus capacity reduced due to concrete weight because this is acting in downward direction. So this is reducing the upward effect of QU. And also the soil here, this is known as fill. So this filled soil or uh, uh, loose material or loose soil material is also reducing the ultimate bearing capacity of the soil. So we can subtract it from the bearing capacity to get the net ultimate bearing capacity. So simply our net ultimate bearing capacity will be equal to total bearing capacity minus gamma of concrete. So mostly gamma of concrete is used LB 150 LB per feet cube or 24 kilo Newton per meter cube. And gamma S is given mostly in the questions uh, in literature. Gamma S for different soil, this is different. So HS is the height of the soil fill and HC is the height of concrete foundation. If we add these to HS plus HC, this becomes equal to DF. You can see here the depth of foundation. So that depth of foundation is converted or divided into two parameters, two parts that is HS and HC. The solid part is the HC that is height of concrete foundation and HS is the fill or reverted fill that is placed over the foundation to cover the to cover the hole or excavated hole or excavated trench till the surface of earth. So first step is this one. The next step is to calculate the required area. This is the final step in the design procedure in, of the geometric design. So required area is basically equal to service load over the foundation divided by the allowable net bearing capacity. So we got the ultimate net bearing capacity. When this ultimate net bearing capacity is divided by factor of safety, which is mostly taken as three, so we will get allowable net bearing capacity. We will simply divide this service load by the allowable net bearing capacity of the soil which we have calculated here. So these two will divide and we will be able to find the required area. This area is for rectangular footing. If footing is rectangular, it will have two different dimensions. First one will be B and second one will be L. So area of footing will be equal to B times L for rectangular footing. If we have same foundation that is square, if then this B will be, this side will also be equal to B. So both dimensions will be equal. So area of foundation will be equal to B times B that is equal to B square. For square foundation, we have this area and for rectangular foundation, we have this area. <coughs> assume B or L, then find the other dimension. If the foundation is rectangular, you will assume uh, one thing. Uh, suppose we are uh, suppose we got area required equal to 50 meter square then you will assume b is equal to 5 meter and then what will be l l will be equal to 50 by 5 required area divided by the assumed dimension this will be equal to 10 meter so length of foundation is 10 meter and width of foundation is 5 meter so our geometric design is complete according to L uh, net allowable bearing capacity of the soil. So if the foundation is square, then the required area will be equal to B square, same like this. So we will have to take the square root. No need to assume first thing or second, calculate second thing, because uh, in case of square foundation, both dimensions are equal. So simply we will get the B when we take the square root of required area. Suppose foundation is square and we get the required area to be 50 meter then for B 
we will do the same procedure and it will be equal to 7 point something you can say 7.7 .7 meter so we can say that this is approximately equal to 8 meter 8 meter we can always overestimate the size we will never underestimate the size mean we can take 8 meter we can net, we can't take 7.5 or 7 meters we can overestimate the size of footing but we can never underestimate it so <clears throat> We, we can calculate Q allowable net, but we have to calculate service load. What is service load? Service load is basically the sum of dead loads, live loads, or any other load given in the question. So for uh, your proper understanding, I have uh, included an example for a square foundation, which is supporting a 24 inch square column. So if the column is square, then you should probably, you should, con you should, uh, be sure that the size or shape of the foundation will also be a square foundation. If the column is rectangular, then the found, uh, shape of the foundation will also be rectangular. Uh, means a shape of the foundation always depends upon the shape of column. Here the column is square, so also <coughs> the shape of foundation will also be square. So here the building has a 30 feet, 10 feet high basement means we have this ground level. Read this line. The bottom of the footing is 13 flow below 13 feet below finished grade. Here this is finished grade or ground level. So from this ground level footing is placed at 13 feet. But he is saying that Basement height is only 10 feet. Mean our structure will be ended at this position. Mean we will excavate from this soil to a depth of 3 feet because this is 10 feet. So if we subtract this 10 feet from 13 feet, this portion of the soil will be 3 feet. So simply we can say that DF is equal to 3 feet. The bottom of foundation is at 13 feet and bottom of soil is at 10 feet. So 13 minus 10 is 3 feet. So dead load applied on the column is 541 kips kilo pounds. Service live load is 194. Concrete density is 150 and allowable dead and live load. This is the allowable net load that is 5600 PSF. This is pounds per square feet. We have to convert it to KSF because these loads are in kips. So simply if we divide it by 1000 5600 by 1000 it will be equal to 5.6 ksf <clears throat> q allowable you can say this as q allowable net so simply what will we do to calculate the required area area required is equal to service load mean dead load plus live load over allowable net bearing capacity that is 541 plus 194 over allowable bearing capacity is 5.6 when we divide and it, the answer comes to be 131 feet square. Because the foundation is square, then what will be B? Here we have denoted L B by smaller L. So it will not make a difference because the foundation is square. So its area is equal to 131 feet square. From here, we saw that area of square foundation is B square. And we have calculated on one side, the area is B square for unknown dimension. Or simply we can see here that L square and by calculations we got the area of 130, 1 fit square. If we take square root on both sides, then L will be equal to 11.6 fit. Mean if we have a foundation like this one, a square foundation, then its one dimension comes to be 11.6 fit. But we overestimate and take it as equal to 12 fit then the other dimension will also be equal to 12 feet. So simply we can say that the foundation or square foundation required to carry these two types of loads 541 and 194 kips is equal to 12 foot by 12 foot. You can simply say that one dimension of foundation is 12 foot and the other dimension of foundation is also 12 foot. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.